Okay, let's uh, get the homework out from yesterday. Yesterday we did the graphing uh, logarithm logarithmic uh, functions. Um, the first couple, you just had to make xy charts. And again, if you graph the exponential function, then you should be able to just switch those around for the uh, logarithmic. And then 63 through 70, you should have been matching up using the transformations, knowing what a negative does, knowing what a number on the outside does. Um, Seventy-one is the only other one that I made you graph. Um, that would be where you would pick points and um, graph over there. I don't know. I'll show you what's at seventy-one. Again, a 4 added to the inside tells me that this is going to move less 4. Um, if I was going to make an XY chart, I know I could pick um, negative 3. And you can use your calculator for LN, but if you plug negative 3 in there, you're going to get LN of 1, which is 0. I also know this 4 tells me that my asymptote is now back there at negative 4. If you pick like, I don't know, I'm going to pick a few different ones. If you pick negative 1, you're now going to have ln of negative 1 plus 4, or that's ln of 3, which is like 1.09. If you pick 0, you're going to get ln of 4, 1.39. If you pick 2, that's going to be ln of 6. See how slow that's going up? terrible graph, but at negative 3 it's at 0. Notice normally at, at 1 it's at 0, but I've moved back 1, 2, 3, 4. At negative 1 it's a little bit above 1. At 0 it's a little bit more above 1. At 2 it's a little bit more. And again it's going to go like that, and it's going to have an asymptote now at negative 4. If I'm grading these, I'm looking for that asymptote uh, and the general shape. Hopefully that helps you on the, uh, the, the matching ones where you can see the asymptotes there. Like 64 is the only one that doesn't have an asymptote at um, no, 64 and 70 are the only two that don't have asymptotes at x equals 0. So if you look at those choices there's only two that have something added or subtracted inside the function, and that would be f and g. Um, notice that f is the normal shape. It's just moved over 1. g is not the normal shape because it has a negative in front of it. So I think 64 should be f, and 70 should be g. Again, just looking for those asymptotes. Um, I want to take a little homework quiz because we didn't have one yesterday. Um, I can tell you, you don't have to graph on your homework quiz, um, so that's good. Um, but it's from yesterday and today. So, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. If you can just uh, have, if the sub could just pause the video, um, pass out homework quiz papers, and then unpause the video and I'll put the homework quiz up. So, pause now, pass out the papers. Okay, everyone has a paper. That means um, no books out, just your homework out, no talking. This shouldn't take more than five minutes because if you have your homework done, you're just copying down. After five minutes, uh, the sub's going to collect them even if you're not finished. So from day one, I want you to copy down what you have from number 18 and number 28. Uh, and from day two, oh my gosh, I just gave the answer to this, uh, number 64. Okay? Um, Pause the video, unpause when uh, you're finished. Okay, everyone's finished now, so um, I'm going to move on to the notes. So get some paper out. If you're not finished, pause until everyone's finished. Um, the last part of 6-4 before spring break, this is the last thing we're learning before spring break, 
is solving equations. We solved exponential equations um, last week, but they're really nice ones. Today we can solve uglier ones because we know that an exponential function and a logarithmic function are inverses. Why is this so important? Because to be able to solve an equation with a log, ln, or exponential function really allows us to do some applications. And we're going to look at a couple story problems uh, in this uh, notes here today, and there's going to be a couple on your homework. Homework just totally says 635. This should say six, four, day, three. Uh, remember I gave you some properties the other day. Uh, these are just reminders. If you feel like you know these already, you don't have to write them down. But these are kind of how we solve equations. Remember, if you have um, two exponential functions with the same base, then you can just set x equal to y. Um, IFF, remember in math terms, that means if and only if. So a to the x equals a to the y, if and only if x equals y. And if you have two logarithms equal to each other, with the same base, then again, that means that x equals y. And so it's all about the same base, and it's one thing equals one thing. No addition, no subtraction. One thing equals one thing with the same base. Also very helpful are these properties. Remember that exponential and logarithms are inverses. So by definition, that means they undo each other. So if you have a to the log a, they cancel each other out, and you get x. Log a of a to the x, they cancel each other out, and you get x, which means we're going to be able to undo these logarithms now. And also remember these are equations. So if you do it to one side of an equation, you have to do it to the other side of the equation. Uh, and maybe you have some memories of this from Algebra 2 or Precalculus. But um, instead of like dividing both sides by 7, we might log both sides. Or we might ln both sides. Or we might e both sides, which is kind of a weird thing to use as a verb. Uh, but that's kind of the stuff that we're going to look at. So let's look at a few examples here. If I'm going too fast here, sometimes it's kind of hard to teach to an empty classroom. Just pause and let people catch up, and then um, unpause when you're ready to move on. So I want to show you this one first. That This is what we did the other day. You don't have to do it this way. But if you can write these problems with the same base, then you can just uh, set the exponents equal to each other. Uh, I kind of threw this one in a little bit harder than what we did last week, because there's a 2 in front of that. But again, it's an equation. So I could divide both sides by 2 here, and I would get a to the x equals 8 divided by 2 is 4. And then again, just like we wanted to do last week, we could write those both as what power? 2, right? 8 is 2 to the third with x up there, and 4 is 2 squared. And if the bases are the same, then I can say 3x equals 2, divide by 3, and I get x equals 2 thirds. And that works. Um, if you can't make them the same bases, when well, we have to have something else to do. Uh, and once I show you this other part, you probably won't make them the same base anymore, because they'll just do the other way. But... If you can make it the same base, I think that's a great way to do these problems. What about this one? 2 to the x equals 10. Can you write 10 as a power of 2? No. Which means um, you could randomly keep guessing exponents until you get close to 10. Or we could figure out what we could do to get that x out of the exponent. And you really have two options here. OK, you can tell I'm uh, a mess today. I just realized this is actually the next section because I am teaching this like I taught it in pre-calculus and we haven't learned what we're supposed to know to do this yet. Um, 
So I think uh, we're just going to skip this for now. If you remember what to do here, you're just ahead of the game. If you don't remember, good thing. None of this is on the homework. I just paused this while I checked what was going on. So let me see if I can figure out a better choice here. Um, yep. That was a mess. Who even knows what I'm doing at this point? Okay, let's do this one. I might just be changing the notes up here. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I should just delete this and start over, but I don't really want to. Okay, this is what we should be doing uh, right now. Log base 2 of x equals 5. Um, one way we could do this is we could use the definition of a logarithm, right? Just like we rewrote these on day 1, um, you should be able to, to do that to solve this problem. If, if I wanted to rewrite this, remember, this is the base. This is the exponent, this is the answer. So this is just like saying 2 to the 5th equals x. It's why it's so important that you know the definition of a logarithm and how to rewrite it. And then you can just solve that, right? There's not much to solve. 2 to the 5th is 32, which means the answer is x equals 32. Uh, and that makes sense. You could check log base 2 of 32, 2 to the what power equals 32, the answer is 5. Um, so I was kind of about to jump ahead and make us do a lot harder problems. We're not there yet because we haven't learned the properties of logarithms. Um, Same idea on this one. So see if you can rewrite this one using the definition of a logarithm and uh, see if you can solve that for x. Base exponent equals the answer, right? So 4 is the base. This part is your exponent equals 1 minus x. So 4 to the 1 equals 1 minus x. I'm just trying to solve that for x. So uh, could I subtract 1? Because 4 to the 1 is just 4. And I would get 3 equals negative x. So x equals negative 3. And again, you could check that. Log 4 of 1 minus negative 3 equals 1 log 4 of 4 equals 1. That's true. You don't have to check these. I'm just trying to show you that they work. What about with E? If you see an E to the X, um, you should know that's ln to undo that. ln, remember we talked about ln of e to the x just equals x, because ln and e undo each other. Um, but when you see a problem with e in it, step one is you need to get that e by itself before you can start uh, uh, ln it. Uh, so on this one, the first thing that you should do is you should add 14, and you get 3e to the x equals 25. Then you could divide by 3, and you get e to the x equals 25 over 3. Don't give me a decimal here. And then again, this is where we want to use the, the inverse of e. Um, and so this is where we could ln both sides. Right? We could use that property that we know. So if I sorry, I'm looking at the book here. The book says it changes logarithmic form, but I think that's ridiculous. I think we should say ln of e to the x equals ln of 25 over 3. Because we have that property that says we know ln of e cancel each other out, which means we know that that's just going to equal x, because that's going to cancel out. And on this side, we're going to have ln of 25 over 3. 
That's an exact answer. I prefer you give me that unless it says to give you a decimal. If you type that in your calculator, you're going to get about 2.120 as the answer there. So to solve for E, um, you need LN. If you see an LN, you need E both sides. Maybe we can do one of those. Shoot. All right, let's look at this really quick, and then I'll do another one. This is from your book. Don't write this whole thing down. That's just silly. Let's just read it, and then we'll talk about what we need to write down. It says, a model for the number N of people in a college community who have heard a certain rumor is given by N equals P times 1 minus E to the negative 0.15D where P is the total population of the community and D is the number of days that have elapsed since the rumors began. In a community of a thousand students, how many days will elapse before 450 students have heard the rumor? Uh, if you want to know, this is number 124 on your homework page, which is 449. So if you want to write that down for number seven and then write just the equation, um, there's no need to write this whole thing down. I picked this question because I think it's pretty cool that they can track how fast a rumor spreads, that it's mathematical to discover how fast a rumor spreads. Um, people freak out about story problems, but they give you an equation. They tell you what every letter represents. You just need to plug in what they give you. So if this was my paper, I wouldn't write this whole problem down. I would write this, the equation. N equals P times 1 minus E to the negative 0.15D. And they tell me that P is the total population. Do I know the total population in this problem? In a community of 1,000 students. Is that the total population? Yeah, I think so. So I'm going to replace P with 1,000. Um, I also know that I want to know how many days that is D. D is the number of days, which means I don't know what D is. So I can leave that in the problem right now, which means I think that means we should know what N is. N is the number of people who have heard the rumor, right? Go back and read what those letters represent. And they want to know how many days before 450 students have heard the rumor. So that's what I can put on that side. Uh, so on these story problems, read it, find the equation, plug in what you know, and then you should be able to solve this. This looks kind of ugly, but it's kind of just like the last problem. If there's an E at some point, we're going to want to LN. Um, but let's get E by itself. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 1,000. And you could simplify that, 45 over 100, what, 5 goes into both of those. Yeah, so that's 9 over 20 equals 1 minus e to the negative 0.15d. So I'm going to subtract 1. 1 is just 20 twentieths, so that's like 9 minus 20 twentieths. 9 minus 20 would be negative 11 twentieths. Again, a lot of algebra in this. To get rid of the negative, I could just divide both sides by a negative, and I would get 11 twentieths equals e to the negative 0.15d. If uh, I can get E by itself, just like the last problem, we want to LN both sides. And we're allowed to do that because it's an equation. So I'm going to LN 11 over 20. And I'm going to LN E to the negative 0.15D. And again, why do I do this? Because LN and E are inverses of each other. And I'm left with a LN of 11 over 20 equals negative 0.15D. Solve that for D, I'm going to divide by negative 0.15. Be careful entering this in your calculator. On my calculators, when you hit LN, it automatically opens a parenthesis. So 
So you need to put 11 over 20 and close that parenthesis, and then you need to divide by negative 0.15. When I did that, I got like 3.99 days. So in how many days before 450 students? I would say in about four days. Until 450 students have heard that rumor. What do you think about that? I don't know if I believe that you can use math to, to show how fast the rumor spreads, but they say you can. I thought the homework was a whole lot different than what it is uh, in my hurried look today before I've, I was gone. Um, but all of the homework, you can just rewrite um, using the definition of a logarithm. Or if it's E, you can just L in it so you can use that one property, which means I think that makes the homework not so bad, but we'll see how you guys feel about it tomorrow. Um, I feel like this is maybe going to change that worksheet that I gave to a few people that aren't going to be here on Thursday because I tried to hurry and make a worksheet for them. Um, if your worksheet doesn't make any sense because we haven't done what's on there, um, you might want to just hold on to that and uh, I will try to get a new one put on Harmony or I'll just give it to you after um, break for those of you that picked that up yesterday. Okay, your homework today is on page 448, and I gave you odds so you could check your answers in the back of the book, um, since I'm not here to check them, but just make sure you know just answers alone is not going to get you credit uh, on the homework when we turn it in, and it's also not going to get you credit on a homework quiz since they're all on odds, so make sure that you show your answers. This is 6-4 day 3. We'll talk about this tomorrow. We'll do a worksheet tomorrow. I'll tell you uh, the worksheet, the side that has all the graphs on it, you can still do that. Hold on a second. Okay, looking at that worksheet, I think you can do most of it. There might be a couple on there that we can't do, but just go ahead and try it. And uh, for those of you that will be here tomorrow, um, I'll try to adjust what I can. So work on this. Uh, I don't mind if you want to work together, but work, get it done. Tomorrow we'll go over it. We'll probably have a homework quiz, and then we'll do a worksheet over this stuff. Okay?